Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Open your Bibles to Galatians chapter one and Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Galatians chapter one and Second Corinthians chapter eleven, and we're studying this evening on the three gospels. The three gospels. Now, of course, immediately whenever you say that. Um, many Christians will go into spasms and have a fit and say, wait a minute, there's, there's only one gospel. What do you mean you're having a lesson on the three gospels? Well, if you could just bear with me for a few minutes, I think you'll see where we're going here. So please do thyself no harm. We are all here. Now, in Galatians chapter 1, beginning in verse 6, Galatians 1 and verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, we believe the gospel for us today is the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. There is no other gospel. Verse 7, which is not another. There is no other gospel. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. That's, that's pretty rough language right there. Basically what Paul is saying is if anybody was to preach another gospel other than the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ, then let God damn that person. Let that person receive the curse of God upon themselves. Uh, that's, that's pretty rough. That's, that's what Paul thought of the gospel of the grace of Christ. Uh, he didn't want anybody messing with it. And you get these people today teaching that you can lose your salvation. Listen, if you teach that you can lose your salvation, you're cursed. According to what we just read, you're cursed. Because what you're teaching is that you have to earn it. It's not the grace of Christ. There's something you have to do other than just simply the grace of Jesus Christ. And if you add to the gospel or you take away from the gospel, you have perverted the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be cursed by Almighty God according to the Scriptures. So yes, we believe in one gospel, the gospel of the grace of Christ. If you'll look with me please in Second Corinthians now, Second Corinthians chapter 11, and look with me, please, in verse 4. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse... Well, start in verse 3 for the context. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus... You know, it's possible to preach uh, Jesus, but it not be the Jesus of the Bible... It says, For if, we come, if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, is it possible for a Christian to receive a, 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 an unclean spirit, a, a demon? Well, according to that verse, it sure is. You say, but I was taught it doesn't matter. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, if you're not careful, you can go ahead and instead of receiving the Holy Spirit, you can receive another spirit, which you have not received, or, watch it, another gospel, which you have not accepted. You might well bear with them. You'll end up listening to them. You'll end up being deceived by someone preaching another gospel other than the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. Now, the gospel is laid out very plainly for us if you'll look in 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. What is the gospel? It's amazing how many Christians you can ask that question to that claim to be saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. And you ask them the simple question, what is the gospel? And they give you the runaround and they say, well, it's uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or they tell you it's the love of God or it's the Bible or whatever. Listen, none of those things is the gospel. The gospel is found right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, please begin reading with me in verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Now, what is he talking about believing in vain? 
What does he mean, unless you believed in vain? Uh, look in verse 13. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So, obviously, one of the conditions of the gospel is to believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that he is alive. That when you asked Jesus Christ to save you, you weren't asking a dead corpse in a tomb to do it. You were asking a living, risen Savior who rose from the dead for you. So, he says in verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. Now, the Gospel is very plain. Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He took your place. He is your sin sacrifice. He is your sin substitute. And there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And he is able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Now look, please, in Second Corinthians... 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Lord Jesus Christ is our sin sacrifice. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look with me in verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Jesus Christ was made our sin sacrifice. He is our substitute, and that is why He is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ paid the full price for our full pardon uh, to give us eternal life simply by believing the precious gospel that Christ died for your sins, the gospel of the grace of Christ, the gospel revealed to the Apostle Paul to be revealed to the church today. So, yes, there is one gospel, but there are three gospels. Now, uh, before I confuse you any further on that, look with me, please, in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 4, and we'll begin in verse 23. Matthew 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the grace of Christ. No. And preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Jesus Christ is not preaching the gospel of the grace of Christ. Listen, had Jesus Christ gone to the cross yet? Had he been buried? Had he risen from the dead? Then how could he be preaching the gospel that you and I preach? You see, when Jesus Christ was on the earth, he came to be the Messiah to the nation of Israel, and therefore the gospel that he is preaching is the gospel of the kingdom, that if they would receive him as their Messiah, he would bring in the kingdom to them. Look with me again, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Let's look, please, in verse 35. Matthew 9 and verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. When Jesus Christ was on the earth during his public ministry, the gospel that he preached was the gospel of the kingdom. Look again, Matthew chapter 11. You'll notice this kingdom is associated with signs and wonders. Why? Because the Jews require a sign. He came unto his own. He came to the nation of Israel. He told his disciples, don't even go into the way of the Gentiles. 
go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came unto his own. He came preaching good tidings of great things. He came as their Messiah. Uh, look in Matthew chapter 11, please. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The poor have the gospel preached to them. What gospel was it that Jesus Christ was preaching? It was the gospel of the kingdom. It was the gospel that Jesus Christ came to be their Messiah. Now look with me please in Matthew chapter 28. All right, now we're at the resurrected Christ. Jesus Christ has now died on the cross. Jesus Christ has now been buried. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And so what is the gospel now that is being preached? Look with me please in Matthew 28 and verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, what gospel is there being preached? Well, there is no mention of the gospel uh, particularly being preached. He does tell them to teach all things that he had commanded them. So obviously it is the same message that Jesus Christ was preaching while he was on the earth. Look with me please in Mark. Mark chapter 16. And if you'll notice, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He's telling them to preach a gospel that is associated with signs and wonders. What is this gospel? Well, obviously baptism is somehow still involved in this thing. It has nothing to do with the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, then you're wrong and the Bible's right. Who was the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ revealed to? Do you know? I mean, it's, it's a great gospel, isn't it? Is that how you were saved? By believing the gospel of the grace of Christ? Do you know who it was revealed to? It was revealed to the Apostle Paul to be revealed to the church. You notice at this time, at the end of the book of Mark, Paul is still a lost Pharisee. How, therefore, could they have the gospel revealed to them? If you'll continue, please now look with me in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And, and please look in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Here's the message in the early part of the book of Acts. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out by believing on Jesus. No. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you. Listen, the message that's being preached there is Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back and take the kingdom. It's still the gospel of the kingdom. That is all that thus far had been revealed to the apostles. There was no further revelation. That doesn't happen until later on in the Bible. It has not happened yet. And until Acts chapter 9, when the Apostle Paul is saved, it's not until after that that God then begins to go out to the Gentiles and call a people unto himself. He departs from Israel. He blinds the nation, the mystery of Israel, and God then has a new gospel, the gospel of the grace of Christ, revealed to the church. And you'll also notice that this gospel of the kingdom will be resumed. The gospel of the kingdom will be continued again in the tribulation. When God is done with the church and the rapture of the church takes place, 
the uh, next thing on God's calendar after that is Daniel's 70th week a period still left of approximately seven years in which God will once again return to the, king, to the nation of Israel and once again offer them this gospel of the kingdom to preach to them that they need to repent and uh, as Jesus Christ said unto them um, you will not see me again until you say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and so they'll be looking for his return uh, that will be the gospel being preached again in the tribulation, the gospel of the kingdom. Notice with me, please, in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and kill you. Ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Notice it's a national thing. He once again is referring to the nation of Israel. Verse 10, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You say, what is he talking about? Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Notice it's a different gospel. What is it? It's the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the rightful ruler to sit on the throne uh, in Jerusalem, in the temple, and to reign over all the earth. And all those that will accept that gospel uh, will be spared at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. All those that reject it will be damned. That is the gospel of the kingdom. Look with me in Mark chapter 8. Once again, Mark chapter 8. So you have the gospel of the grace of Christ, the gospel that we preach today, but that is not the gospel that was being preached during uh, the uh, time when Jesus Christ was on the earth and shortly after that. That gospel had to be revealed to Paul to be revealed to the church later. Look with me in Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the Gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Notice this gospel has to do with the coming Messiah, the one that's coming to reign over the earth, and you must endure till that time. You must uh, continue to believe that he is the true Messiah. It is not the Antichrist. It is not the devil's son. It is not some false prophet. Uh, take heed that you be not deceived. That is the warning for that time period during the tribulation period. It is the gospel of the kingdom that will be resumed and be preached during that time. Now, there is another gospel, a third gospel, if you will, and that gospel is different than the other two. That gospel is found in Revelation. Look with me in the book of Revelation, the last book in your Bible. Revelation in chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. And let's begin reading in Revelation 14 and verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand Jehovah Witnesses. No, no. <laughs> Having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Uh, so it's obvious these 144,000 are not Jehovah Witnesses. They are virgin Jewish males. Uh, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. 
These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw, so we're in the tribulation, obviously, and this is what's going on. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Who's preaching this gospel? It is an angel that is preaching this gospel. It is not a man. Uh, this gospel is being preached by an angel that is flying in the midst of heaven and he's preaching it to the entire earth to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. What is the gospel? What is this gospel, this everlasting gospel that will be preached? Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. What is the everlasting gospel? Fear God, give glory to Him, worship Him. You know why it's called the everlasting gospel? Because after Jesus Christ comes back, that will be the only gospel that will ever be preached from that time forward. That gospel will simply be, fear Him, give glory to Him, worship Him. That's it. Say why? Well, in the millennium, nobody's going to have to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. He'll be there in a physical body on the earth, reigning on the earth. What, how would you believe that? That's, it's just right in front of you. There's no faith involved, you see. And so this everlasting gospel is the gospel from that time forward that will be preached. That will be a, a gospel. Guess how long that gospel will last? One guess. One guess. It will last forever. You say, why do you say that? Because it's called what? The everlasting gospel gospel. I know that's deep. That's deep theology. You've got to grasp that and really get a hold of it. And so there's actually, according to the Bible, three gospels for three different time periods, if you would. Three different revelations that have been given concerning good news. The first one being the gospel of the kingdom. When Jesus Christ came to preach, he preached the gospel of the kingdom, that he uh, would be the one, he would be the one that would uh, reign on the throne uh, in the temple in Jerusalem. He was their Messiah. He was the one they needed to receive and believe upon. Of course, we know they did not do that. Uh, they rejected him. Uh, even after his resurrection, he was rejected by the leadership uh, up through Acts chapter 7 of the nation of Israel. And therefore, God calls a man out named Saul of Tarsus. He saves him and he gives him a revelation concerning a new gospel, the gospel of the grace of Christ. That is the gospel that is now being preached and will continue to be preached until the rapture of the church. Upon completion of the rapture of the church, the gospel of the kingdom will once again be preached. Why? Because Jesus Christ will be preparing to return and reign over the earth. And thus the, they must receive him as Christ, as the, as the living Messiah, and want to see him come back and reign upon the earth. And then after the tribulation is over and the Lord has come to reign, the gospel from that time forward will simply be, fear God, worship God, give glory to Him. Amen. And that's the three gospels. Notice the sequential uh, relative ease by which that flows. Uh, the Lord isn't trying to trick anybody with that. See, There's no way that the gospel, the grace of Christ, was being preached while Jesus Christ was on the earth. Uh, at that time, the disciples weren't even uh, aware of it. Uh, Peter got in an argument with the Lord about it several times because there was no way that he was uh, going to believe that Jesus Christ was going to die. He was their Messiah. He was going to rule and reign. And they were blinded to the, to the cross. They were blinded to the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ until after his resurrection and after the revelation given to the Apostle Paul. So, uh, we've seen that there are uh, three Gospels, but only one Gospel for the church today. And after we take a break, we'll look at that Gospel, the Gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. <laughs> 